Testing, testing, testing. I bet you can hear me now. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. What about now? Can you hear me? Somebody give me the thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, good. David says yes. Sorry about that, guys. This is the way these things go. Um, all right, let me start over. <laughs> if you knew the channel, I have uh, been on YouTube for about 11 years. I run a weed control and fertilization business in Alabama. And um, I used to have a mowing business before that. I do not have a audio and visual business, as you can tell from the no sound at the beginning of this thing. But the uh, way these things typically work is we just take questions from the crowd here. You post your questions. I'll try to get to you. It looks like I've got a lot of questions about no audio and no sound. I'm uh, just kidding. I appreciate you guys letting me know that because I did not do proper tests before I put went live. Um, my channel is Long Care Life. I, I hit 100,000 subscribers a few years ago. That may sound like somewhat of a milestone. It took me about 11 years to get there, so <laughs> it's, it's more of a... Uh, in a test of endurance than it was a race. But anyway, I was happy to get that done. I want to also mention the sponsors of the channel. Uh, my two regular sponsors on my channel are Graham Spray Equipment. I'm working my Graham Spray Equipment shirt here. And uh, Yard Book. Those are both, I'm happy to say both those companies, I was a customer of theirs before they became a sponsor of mine. So I have a Graham Spray rig on the back of my truck. You can go check them out, GrahamSE.com. Or... Um, the other is Yardbook, and they have uh, their software companies. So I've been with Yardbook over seven years. And anyway, so let's um, get to the questions here, and I will try to touch base uh, with as many of these as I can. Appreciate you guys joining the show. Good evening, sir. I have just started a Bermuda lawn from seed and my neighbors are getting envious and asking for advice. I'm tempted to mislead them so they don't do better. Um, well, I'd be interested, Mary, how you went about the, the Bermuda lawn. I know I haven't grown a lot of Bermuda grass from seed or any grass from seed. I have a relative who's growing a centipede lawn down on the coast of Mississippi and he showed me pictures of how great it looks. Uh, my understanding, uh, obviously, is that some of these Pennington grass seeds are uh, hybrid grass seed that you can grow from seed, and they're better quality than just your obviously common Bermuda, which grows in just about every cow pasture around here. Um, but, yeah, it needs to be hot weather. Obviously, loose soil is going to help, and having an irrigation plan until it gets established. But, no, I'm not uh, big on, on neighbor envy and not helping others out, I think. Um, I would not suggest you do that. I think it's better if, if the whole neighborhood has a great looking lawn would be my suggestion. So let me find and get through here where I can get through the ones that say, um, the ones that have anything other than how well they can hear me. Jason, I've heard a lot of pros on using tenacity on lawns for broad, broad spectrum weed control. What would you say are the cons? Well, I'll say this, and, and I need some people to chime in here. Um, the cons are for me is we, we almost never use it on warm season grasses. So I, I think tenacity is an inexpensive product of my understanding that people with cool season grasses use a whole, whole lot. Now I, I'm not familiar with it because we just don't use it here. Um, but I, I think it's, uh, we need somebody to chime in that, that deals with cool season grasses that could give us some more information on tenacity. Uh, but like I said, I, us dealing with Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, St. Augustine Lawns, Tenacity. I'm not sure if it's label form or not. Again, it's just not used much here. Uh, let's see. Is bifenthrin best for Louisiana mosquitoes? I think you can use a bifenthrin for mosquitoes. I've heard people doing that, but I've um, I've got a problem. I don't do mosquito control, but i got a friend that does, and Trying to remember the name of the product. He, he gave me like a combo product. So it's like, a, he didn't give it to me. He told me what to use and I went and bought it. Sorry if my head's glowing from the lights in the background. Uh, the combo product is, it's like a larva side plus insecticide. So it's supposed to get the larva plus the adults. Um, I can't remember what it's called, to be honest with you. Uh, but that, I think there's other product. By Fenthrin, I, I know people do use that. And it's good for a lot of insects, including mosquitoes. How are you liking the Celsius extra? So Grand Effects is, um, so the 
Bayer, a Bayer rep sent me a bottle of Celsius Extra. And I didn't know, and some people, I've had several people comment saying, where can I buy that at? I, I was just kind of assuming it was for sale on the market. Maybe it's not, I don't know. But um, Celsius Extra is Celsius with a sedge product in it. I think the same active ingredient that's in Pro Sedge or Sedge Hammer, the halosulfuron, if I'm saying that right, I'm probably not. Um, so you're basically going to get what the, the benefits of Celsius. So that's going to take care of a lot of your broadleaf weeds, help have some effect on some grassy weeds, even like poa annua in the, in the cooler weather. Um, Celsius can work on dove weed. It can help with crabgrass. I mean, a lot, lots of stuff. Um, but now instead of having, you know, a lot of times I mix Celsius and certainty together to give me a little bit more effectiveness on sedges. Well, the extra is, is your sedge product. So, uh, you know, I think it's great. I think it's going to do gangbusters on purple and yellow nudge sedge and do great on suppressing those. I um, still think there's probably some better options for straight up Kalingas, you know, some of your Kalinga type weeds. Um, but I think it would be adequate on those and, and very good on many other weeds. So I think it's a good product. The cost, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is in the price. You know, if you were just to mix Celsius and Pro Sedge on your own, how much are you saving about it together? I'm assuming it's a little bit cheaper. And it's also just convenient that it comes in one bottle. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Low rate of change up and normal rate MSM on Centipede right now. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I'm using, I mean, I don't know where you live. I don't know if the, if the Centipede is super stressed out, things like that. Yeah, and that's just another note. If you want to. Tell me where you live, what kind of grass you have. So, um, you know, if your centipede's very stressed out and drought stressed and all that, then then I would say no. But if it's doing well and it's not 104 degrees, then I think it's fine. I've been going like super low rate on the change up, like eight to 10 ounces, which is actually uh, below. I, I, I'd have to check. I'm sorry. I might have to look back. It might have been 12 ounces. I need to go back and look. But I think 16 ounces is kind of a low rate on uh, change up and you can go up to 32 ounces i believe on a centipede lawn so i think i was using 12 ounces which is, is really really low and then i was just using a quarter ounce of msm so you say normal rate i mean there's several rates on the msm label um so i'm using quarter ounce which is quarter ounce per acre was very low very cheap change up 12 ounces per acre very cheap very low and i would feel fine with that on a on a relatively healthy centipede lawn but again what is there a need to get out there and just blanket the whole yard? It may not be. Okay. If you're going to do it, I wouldn't do it in the middle of the day when it's a hundred degrees. Um, you may can get by with just putting three quarters of an ounce of change up per gallon of water and a little bit of surfactant in a backpack sprayer and go out there and just spray. And if you got a little bit of like Virginia buttonweed, Lespedeza, Spurge, things like that, change up is great. Change your chamber bitter, things like that. Uh, by Fenthrin is good on mosquitoes. WM says, thank you for that. And by Fenthrin, you know, we, uh, I heard last year, was it getting a little bit of shortages, people trying to get it. Of course, there's been shortages on a lot of things, but you know, we had a severe army worm outbreak in the fall. And so, uh, they sold lots of by Fenthrin last year. This guy says I use by uh, live by the swamp and it works well. So sounds like, Lawn masters that you're getting a couple people agreeing with you that that is great for the Louisiana mosquitoes. Appreciate you guys chiming in. Bob Fenthrin or X Check. So I'm not familiar with that one. I forget the one I'm using. I think it's called Pro something, but I'm not sure. What is better to apply with a dog? Spraying by Fenthrin or a granular product? I'm going to just refer you to the label on that one. And, um, just check the label. I mean, I, I don't, again, dogs, I don't think are going to be around eating the granular products, but I just, I'm not going to get into all that kind of stuff. All right. Hey, Jason, just moved into a new house with thin St. Augustine in the back. If I hammer it with nitrogen, will it spread similar how Bermuda does? It does spread, um, you know, think about this, uh, and I'll just tell you what I know, but if, if you go, if you put a little bit of, uh, if you put some high nitrogen down and when you say hammer it, I don't know what you're hammering it with, but a lot of high nitrogen fertilizer, one, 
uh, some quick release high nitrogen fertilizer, you may risk burning the lawn. Um, but two, more likely, you risk just wasting a lot of the nutrients because the grass is that illustration of you know drinking out of a fire hydrant. Like it, it can only use so much nitrogen at, at one given time. And so, yes, it's going to give it a boost and maybe turn it green, help it spread, whatever. Uh, but how much ever you waste it. So that's why I use a slow release fertilizer for one reason, but it, it just kind of feeds it at a rate that the grass can actually use the nutrients so you're not wasting the nutrients. Um, but I, I would assume that nitrogen would help it to spread faster, uh, but I do not think it is going to spread as fast as Bermuda does. That being said, this is a great time to make your grass grow, July, August, even into September. Grass grows a lot in our warm season lawn. So I think the timing is right if you hadn't fertilized yet. And I uh, hope, hope you can get some stuff growing. Uh, let's see. What are you using for Virginia buttonweed? I heard somebody talk about they're from Virginia and they never seen Virginia buttonweed uh, in Virginia. But we definitely have it in Alabama. Virginia buttonweed, if you don't not familiar with it, you can Google a picture of it. It's like a low-growing vine, and it had little white flowers on it. It's very tough. I've heard Roundup will not kill it. Um, a lot of things will suppress it. So I, I've been basically using Celsius and certainty mixed together. It's been kind of my go-to this summer for a couple of reasons. One is it, the, it does okay in the hot weather, and the temperatures have been a concern. Uh, and it works on just about near everything. You know, So I just kind of simplify things. Well, in Virginia buttonweed, like the dismissed products, like things that have sulfitrazone in it, like blindside, they work really good. You got to be a little careful with those, sure enough, when it's hot because it'll um, burn your grass. Uh, let's see. The Celsius certainly does work on it. Change Up's also a very good product on Virginia buttonweed. I'm sure there's other, it, you know, the Change Up Metzulfuron combo also can work um, well on it. All right, I am in South Mississippi. We've had a regular rain, and we're doing irrigation revamp on it now. Not really showing hardly any stress. Quite a bit of rain in the four class as well. I think this was a guy asking about centipede. Yeah, he was asking about um, spraying centipede and MSM. Yeah, I just go super low rates, you know, just 12 ounces per acre, change up, quarter ounce of uh, metzofurum. Again, if if there a need to blanket it, it, you know, don't just blanket it just for the sake of, um, just blanket it just so you say you did. Paul Jameson. Paul says, what's up, Connor Smith? My friend Paul, you can catch him on the Green Industry Podcast on all your major podcast platforms. Paul makes fun because I use a podcast platform called Podbean, and it works. I hit the button and it starts playing. I mean, what else am I supposed to get out of a podcast platform? I'm mainly using Change Up for Lespedes and MSM for Bahia. Those are two good products for that. Absolutely. I've heard some states want to replace lawns with clover and wildflower. Well, there's certainly some people that do. I don't know what states they live in, but um, there's certainly a place for clover and wildflower. Connor says, hey, back to Paul. All right, Kay, thanks. Second, I'm in an HOA, unfortunately, and if the grass ain't green, they get mean. <laughs> All right. Water bill can balloon to three to $400 a month during a summer day. What's the best heat drought resistant grass? Now, you, I think this is the one that was asking about, um, let's see, what were you asking about? asking about tenacity i believe so I, I, my concern is that you live where they have cool season grasses and if i and i'll say it again i'm not a, i don't deal with cool season grasses so maybe somebody can chime in now for us in the south i mean bermuda is is about as drought tolerant i don't know it's about about second in line next to a cactus as far as plants go I mean, it is extremely drought tolerant we have i guess it's been five years ago now maybe even six almost we had just a, a, I'm not saying record drought, but it was historic, I'd say. We went about two months with no rain. You say, well, two months. I mean, well, it was two months in August and September with like 90s, you know, temperatures. And I mean, it killed some zoysia lawns and killed some centipede lawns. Uh, but the Bermuda, I don't know that I saw a Bermuda lawn die. I mean, they can just turn crispy brown and bounce back. Again, but that's dealing with warm season turf. If you got cool season grasses, I don't know, but you might um, want to leave them long, don't cut them short. Uh, 
you know, water early in the morning so that your water goes as long as you can. But I, I know some of those, and it's dry and hot, those cool season grasses are going to struggle in the summer. It's been raining here in the evening every day this week. But my question is, can a yard be dethatched during the summer safely? The yard is nice, but it's got dethatch. Got, I guess, thatch like crazy. Uh, I don't see why that would be a problem. Um, you you know, again, I don't know what kind of grass you're dealing with. If you have a lot of thatch buildup, I would think getting it out whenever would, you know, sooner the better would, would be helpful. But most of the time, like I don't dethatch my Bermuda grass or I just mulch the clipping. I don't bag them and, and they break down over time. But I know some grasses are not going to break down as quickly. So um, not sure what kind of grass you have. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't see any problem with that. I'm on the Georgia Florida line. Okay. Um, well, in Georgia Florida line, you, you know, I'm gonna see, assuming you've got probably either centipede or St. Augustine grass. I don't know. I, yeah, I wouldn't use tenacity. I, I'm not sure uh, about that. You know, change up is a is a commonly used herbicide. It's not too expensive. You can buy it, I think, in like a 32 ounce uh, jug off Amazon. Um, certainty celsius celsius certainty i use those all the time but uh they're they're a little more they're like 100 bucks a bottle or something but yeah you could you could uh, probably have bermuda grass where you are it's very very drought tolerant do you incorporate preventative fungicide applications in your program or you just treat it if it appears uh, i do not have preventative fungicide in my program um but, you know, it seems like the same the same yards that have a fungus problem one year are the ones that have it seemingly every year. And this year, I noticed a couple of yards that have what they call spring dead spot. I had to email or text a picture of my friend James, who y'all seen on here. And I said, what's this? It's yard. I mean, yard looked great, Bermuda yard, and it's got these big dead spots in it. And he's like, oh, that's spring dead spot, you know, and it's, a, I believe, a type of fungus. And so... You know whether I whether I'm going to treat that or not. I mean, and you got some yards that just have a, a drainage issue, and they end up with the same. I'm trying to move with that light, block that light a little bit. Um, say a drainage issue, and you end up with the same fungus every spring. Seems like, and you could probably put a fungicide out in the fall to help prevent that. But it's not part of my program. No, fungicides are expensive, and it's not like every yard gets a fungus. Um, so. And oftentimes, the time you see them in the yard, it might even be too late. Like I see something, a big, uh, large patch in the uh, spring, it may it may already be dead and recovering by that time. So fungus fungicide might not be doing a whole lot of good, but sometimes makes the customer feel better, and it can at least prevent the fungus from reactivating itself and causing worse effects. But it's not necessarily going to help it recover any faster, my understanding. What's the difference in the seed head from Dallas grass and goose grass? I did a video, um, I think like this week, I believe, where I showed seed heads. Uh, I believe I showed both of those. Now, Dallas grass is, a, you know, a big, tall, thick stalk, and it's got perpendicular, uh, you know, kind of like, it's hard to, hard to do this. Anyway, that's the big stalk, and it's got perpendicular things coming off both sides, kind of alternating, like one here, and then move up, one going the other way, move up, one going the other way. So uh, with big black seeds on it, that's Dallas grass. Goose grass uh, seemed like I, – I just showed it a little bit. Anyway, Google, go to YouTube and say put Lawn Care Life um, – identify grass by seed heads or something. See if there's a video that just popped from the last day or two that I did. Because I don't remember. I, I might can find it for you. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Give me just a second. Um, grass, seed, heads, lawn care, life. Do a quick search. Here's one. Grass, seed, heads are ugly. Oh, here, here we go. I found it. Uh, let's see. How do I copy my own video? Oh, no, it's starting to play and talk. It's running an ad of real green software. Let's see. Share. Here's a share button. Copy. And back on with you guys. All right. 
Sorry about that. Uh, let me post this in the comment section. So that's a video that I just posted the last comment. So that if you don't see the seed heads, I think I'm pretty sure it shows goosegrass. Now, Dallas grass and goosegrass don't really look that similar to me. Um, I've been I've got a video going now. I'm in process of killing some goosegrass in my yard using Dismiss NXT and Solitaire. Both work good. I think that Dismiss NXT is working great. I mean, just obliterate it. So it's working great. All right. Uh, let's see. That guy says, my idea was to dethatch around September and plug and seed in the in that month's time. Yeah, I mean, you may be dealing with cool season grasses because um, I know that's kind of the standard procedure there as far as plugging and seeding. And, uh, again, that's going to be a little bit out of what we normally do here in the south. But, you know, I, I personally, don't, I don't see what it would hurt to dethatch now. Obviously, I don't think now would be a good time to put out your cool season grass seed. Um, so I think you do it now or you can wait either way. I don't I don't see a big difference to me. Uh, hello, sir. Having trouble spreading sand. I've seen grass in my front yard. I'm over in Houston, Texas, where there's no rain at the moment. I water every other day in the mornings. Um, you know, I, I don't know other than I'm trying to think. You you know, watering obviously is great. Um, fertilizer is great. Uh, you, you might can try plugging some, which is what I've, I've got that pro plugger thing. I've talked about it's like 40 bucks on Amazon. You just search for pro plugger, but you take plugs and you could like start putting plugs all over your yard in the bare spots. And that as those plugs get established, they help start spread. And then maybe, I don't know if your, if your soil is just hard and compacted, I don't, I don't know if it is or not, Sometimes just having some looser soil might help. So whether that is like I got a top dressing mix recently and it had some top soil, some sand, some other stuff, and it just gives it some loose soil that might help it a little bit. Um, but those are just a few thoughts. Don't fertilize in hot weather. Weather. Don't water during the day because it evaporates or burn grass blades. Only water one per week. What's your take on mist in the lawn community? Um, well, yeah, I, I know kind of what I, what we deal with, with our warm season grasses. So I'm not sure about cool season grasses, but we, we definitely fertilize in hot weather. I don't, I don't see any problem with that. Uh, don't water during the day. I mean, I think it's ideal to water early in the morning where the grass can use it before it evaporates. I think you can water in the day. I wouldn't be concerned about it burning the grass grass blades I, the idea about watering later in the day is at, like in the evening is the water sits on the grass blade and can cause fungus you know because you just got water the grass stays wet all night long so you water in the morning the grass uses it up uses what it can and then it evaporates off there so i think that's the idea i don't i don't see any problem watering during the day to me watering water is better than no water uh, only water one per week. We do tell people typically to do that. Um, now, again, that might vary if you're if it's 105 where you live and just so hot, you know, once a week may not be long enough, to be honest with you. Or if you just put out some sod this year in, in June and it's not established yet. I mean, obviously, I water more than once a week. But general rule, uh, where, where we live, you know, I've got a lot of Bermuda grass lawns, the, the grass is basically bulletproof almost and a lot i run into people watering too much more than not enough and so they're running the irrigation all the time uh and, and sometimes they'll run it 10 minutes a day and we tell them hey water once a week and just soak it really good versus I'm trying to make my head stop glowing with that light uh water it once a week for 45 minutes to 60 you know i'm I'm sorry, 30 minutes per zone or something and give it one good soaking once a week versus 10 minutes every other day or 10 minutes, five days a week or something like that. So, uh, but I, you know, I think sometimes you just got to use common sense, let your grass be the guide. I mean, I've seen it where it will be so hot and dry here and I go walk in one of my customer's yards and his backyard is just squishy. Like it's like I'm walking on jello and I'm thinking, man, you are watering the grass too much. And they, of course it's green, but it just creates fungus. It creates a, you got nut sedge and all that just loves wet areas. 
So it's just a disservice. And I don't, I think they could cut their water uses by a third. And I mean, you know, a third of what they're doing and which wouldn't really affect how green it is. Anyway, good question. Uh, let's see. I have a dirt patch that used to be grass. I think I've shocked it dead. Now I'm trying to grow it back. The dirt's too firm and rocks. What should I do? Maybe, um, you know, maybe bring in a little bit of loose topsoil. I'm not sure what kind of grass you have, but even, I mean, worst case scenario, you could just put some sod there and water it like crazy. Um, but you got to loosen up. If it's hard dirt and rocks, I mean, just, I mean, if you don't even want to bring in dirt, I was thinking like get a metal rake and, and just scrape it and give it, loosen up the soil a little bit and give it a chance. I've got some places in my yard. Well, let me give you an example. Um, I had a, I got a two pallets, no, one pallet of emerald zoysia this year. And I put it under a uh, area that doesn't get full sun and it's doing okay. I mean, I don't water it that much. It, it's alive. I'll say that it, it's kind of struggled. Uh, well, I did no, virtually no soil prep, just threw it on the ground in March and it's just kind of hanging in there. Well, a friend of mine, he got a pallet of emerald zoysia. He brings in a load of topsoil, preps it all real nice, topsoil. What I mean, I saw he planted after mine. Okay, mine, you can still see the lines in between the pieces of soil. His looks like carpet. I mean, it's unbelievable how great it looks. Uh, so the soil made a huge difference. And so, you, you know, bringing in some decent soil would help. But if nothing else, just loosen up the soil you got. I mean, just beat it with a, a shovel or a whatever to kind of loosen it up. But, you know, rocks is not great for growing grass. Uh, Bermuda is the strongest to stand up with drought. Yeah, Bermuda is very strong to drought. If you got irrigation best, it's water around three to four in the morning for about 45 minutes per zone. If no irrigation, you use water late, late evening. Well, like I said, I don't think about water late in the evenings. You, you run the risk of the water sitting on there over the course of night. I, I guess his point is, if you if you don't have irrigation, you're not going to want to wake up at three in the morning. Um, but I might wake up 530 and put water on there. I, I would lean toward that versus late evening because again you run the risk of we get a uh, dollar spot real bad on bermuda lawn so you, you know you got that water sitting on there all night and you're going to end up dollar spots just little brown spots all over your yard doesn't look too great jason how do you stay cool during the heat bucket cooler hat have you used the cool gator neck wrap cooler i haven't used the cool gator neck wrap cooler though it sounds great uh, i'm not familiar with that one i do have this thing it's, it's probably similar. It's one of those like foam cooling towels. So you get it wet and you wring it out and you wrap it around your neck or on your head or whatever. And it's supposed to stay uh, cool for several hours. And those do work. I haven't been using it this year. I wear a big hat with a neck flap, uh, put sunscreen on. I wear long sleeve pants, long, I mean, I'm sorry, long sleeve shirt and pants, all that for my PPE. But I mean, it's just hot. I, I try to drink a bunch of water, but I, I think uh, I think I might should break out that cooling wrap. When it's 95 to 100, it's just hot. I mean, I try to start early. I'll say this. This morning, I got out at like 545, and I had this gravel walking path that I was supposed to spray. And I'm out there super early, and it's it just felt great. But, you know, when you go out there at 3 in the afternoon, just forget about it. It's so hot. What's the time frame for St. Augustine to decompose after mowing? Uh, I, I don't know, but I would think St. Augustine would be one of the faster ones to decompose. I know from mowing grass, like St. Augustine is, is one of the easiest to mow. Because, I mean, you think about it, it's not, yeah, it can be nice and thick. But you got those big wide blades and it just, mower just seems to blow through it. Um, so my gut feeling is breaking down pretty fast. Uh, zoysia, my understanding, is the the slowest of our warm season grass to break down. And because it's a little woodier composition, maybe more likely to need to be dethatched, if that's the word, uh, or bagged when you maybe you're going to scalp it on the first cut of the year and bag it. So that, that would be my thoughts on that. But good question. Guys, I just share what, if somebody else has answers to what I'm what's being asked, just Bring it on. Okay. Any tips for someone getting to get their pesticide license? I've got to do the core and right of ways in a few months. 
Well, that's going to vary um, state to state. In Alabama, we take a test. Um, the license I have is called the OTPS. It's Ornamental Turf and Pest Supervisor License. It doesn't mean that I can, you know, get some special products that other people can't get. Now, there's a few restricted products that I can buy that maybe a regular homeowner can't, but most homeowners can buy the same stuff I'm using online or at some store. Uh, but I, I am legally allowed to come to somebody's house and spray it and charge them money. Okay. So that's kind of what my license does. Now, if I remember, my, it's been a while. And again, each state's going to vary on how these, how you get licensed. We just take a test. It's like 50 questions, multiple choice. And now you have continuing education after that. But as I remember, it's like some legal stuff on there. It's not necessarily like some stuff that's going to necessarily help you be successful in, in your business. But it's some legal stuff. Uh, it was seemed like I remember questions about pests and insects and fungus and disease and all that. Um, maybe some math type questions. I'm just telling you what what our test was like math because you know you're calibrating uh things of that nature uh all right there's my comment there that's the video i guess i don't know if you can cut and paste that or not but anyway, i just searched like lawn care life grass seed head somebody was asking about the difference of dallas grass seed head versus a what was the other one goose grass seed head also i have a mix between um, centipede and bermuda grass is mixing okay so i choose one well, typically, if you have centipede and Bermuda side by side in the same lawn, my experience has been that the centipede typically wins out. Now, if I would say which one do you have most of? If, I, if I've got a Bermuda grass lawn, it's just got a little bit of centipede. I'm going to try to beat the centipede up and, and ultimately try to help, hopefully let the Bermuda take over. So I'm spraying it with things that are labeled for Bermuda grass that are not labeled for centipede, hoping that Bermuda will fill in. Because if you just leave them alone, I, I do believe the centipede patch is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger each year. And now if you got a yard that's mostly centipede and a little bit of Bermuda mixed in, then maybe, you know, maybe the centipede only chokes out the Bermuda. And, um, so I would I would say, you know, how, how much of one do you have versus how much of the other? Because if it's like a Bermuda front yard, centipede backyard, I just leave them separate and just go with it, you know. But if it's sort of one sort of halfway oddly mixed in with the other i would try to try to get rid of it if it was me because that those two just don't blend that well uh if it was bermuda and emerald zoysia i mean i can i can work with that bermuda and centipede they just look very different troy says thank you very much i love your videos i appreciate that troy thanks for um, being part of the channel can you apply pgr that's uh Plant growth regulator, I believe is what that stands for, on Bermuda in the morning with dew on the grass, or does grass need to be dry? You know, I checked the label, but I, I doubt that's going to make much of a difference. Um, so a growth regulator, I use one that's called Podium, and you apply it, for those of you not familiar with it, uh, you apply it to your grass, and it's going to basically encourage the grass to, to have deeper root growth and more lateral growth, but not as much more um, vertical growth okay so hopefully give it a little thicker denser look you can think about using that on a putting green or something where you're trying to keep your grass really low and tight um, but i do it and I, I don't know if i necessarily see a lot of denser looking turf i think i've heard it maybe you'll see that if you are uh, if you're cutting it really short so for me i do it just because i got like four acres and I, i'm trying just to keep from having to cut the grass quite so often um, so I'm using podium. I forget on, on a hybrid Bermuda lawn, it's like 11 ounces per acre. So it, it's really not that expensive and uh, it, it definitely works. I'll say that. And it's lower rates on, um, he says he's got Bermuda. If you got St. Austin, it's like a really low rate for that and can give it a nice, healthier look. Are you going to do a collab with how to with Doc? Cause I'd pay to see you guys do a Q and a. Uh, I don't know him. I mean, I know who you're talking about. I've seen I've seen him on YouTube and I've met a lot of the other uh, guys that do YouTube videos for, about lawn care, but I have not personally met him. Um, unfortunately, I have seen a lot of a lot of people uh, know a lot of the other guys that are influencers in the lawn care community, but I do not know him. But would love to meet him someday. Is it bad for Bermuda to have seed heads? I have heard it, it means the lawn's healthy. I've also heard you Bermuda needs something when you go to seed heads. I put lime down earlier this year. 
Well, I asked my friend James that recently. My yard seemed like earlier this year was going to seed real quickly. And I said, James, uh, my yard is going to seed. And I'll say this, like I've got some common Bermuda and it's going to seed like after two days after cut. I mean, it's ridiculous. Now the hybrid Bermuda is going to be slower, which I think is good. I personally do not like the look of the seed heads. Um, and he said, yeah, I said, is it, is that a sign that it's, you know, nutrient deficient or drought stressed or whatever? He said, yeah, it could be, could be some of both, you know? So if it needs water, it may, um, start putting out seed heads. If it uh, needs nitrogen, it may put out seed. So I, I will say, uh, we had more rain and I fertilized and I'm not noticing it nearly as bad. All right. Paul says, that a, a, a video of me mowing on his Instagram has got 9.8 million views. Uh, well, that's great, Paul. I am, I, you know, Paul told me the secret here. I'm going to share this. He won't care. But if, if you do everything perfect on you on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, then people think, oh, that was perfect. And they won't comment or they'll say that was great. But if you kind of mess up a little bit, all oh, these people love to get on there and tell you what you did wrong and how they would do it better and their greatest. And when I was 12, I was the greatest lawnmower ever and all that. And uh, so and that and then somebody else comes on there and defends you. Say, oh, get off of Jason's back. He's great. No, no, he's not. He's an idiot. He couldn't tote my jock strap and all this other. And uh, and so it, it goes back and forth. And anyway, that's, uh, that helps the video. So Paul put me and Paul been out mowing some of these overgrown yards and I probably, I blew clippings in the flower beds and did all kinds of stuff that was probably didn't cut straight lines. And, and some of these people are unreasonable, really. I mean, we spent three hours on one yard, double cutting it, you know, and I'll say it, it, that was like two months ago, Paul, I went by the, that yard still ain't been cut since then. We cut it one time. That's the only cut it's had the whole year. Anyway, it's about three hours going diagonal over this giant zoysia lawn. Cut it one way, go back and cut it the opposite diagonal direction. I mean, and, and people's like, I have people on there wanting to know why we didn't rake the clippings or why did you do such a sorry job? I was like, come on, man. I ain't, I ain't got time for all that. So, all right. I ordered my pro plugger right after you mentioned it. I watched the video you did maybe last week. Yeah, I like the pro plugger. And, um, I've got one. It's a, it's a metal thing. It's like if you're going to cut like a golf hole in the, in your lawn, but it's so, and you can put about 10 or 12 plugs in there, just go around to the healthy part of your lawn and stomp on it. And it'll uh, cut plugs of grass like this deep with roots on and everything. And then you go into a place that's bare spots and you can put those in the ground. And the great thing is it's already got the dirt and the roots and everything. So the chance of survival is great. Oh, best comment of the night. Slick Trick has given me $9.99. I really appreciate that. And um, not expected, but definitely appreciate it. Enjoy the channel. Your guy who finally convinced me to remove the guard on my line trimmer. Instant improvement in the quality trim. Tell you what, that's a good example. Uh, I talked about removing the guard on the trimmer. And I got some people think I was the greatest thing ever. And others that cannot believe I still got two eyeballs that I hadn't put with my eyes out. I took the guard off my trimmer and I said, well, you know what? I wear glasses. I wear safety glasses. And, I'm, and also don't try to throw debris straight in my eyeball. But And I don't just hold the trigger all the full throttle all the time. Just mine, just trying to mow down the, you know, an oak tree. I'm, I'm out there just cutting grass. You know, I'm not mowing in a rock, a gravel pit. Uh, I water my Bermuda at 5 a.m. in South Carolina. I think 5 a.m. is a great time to water your Bermuda. Thank you very much for the help. Keep up the good work. I watch all your videos. Appreciate that, Jesse, and appreciate the support. You know what's interesting about this is sometimes I, I've changed the time. Like I've done these at six o'clock, eight o'clock. I, I did at eight o'clock my eight o'clock my time, which I realize is nine Eastern. Uh, my kids go to bed around eight, so that's one reason I have a little uh, little quiet time and, and not have to interrupt um i can be with my kids until bedtime then i can sit on here and do this but also when you change up time frames you, you get a little bit new audience so some of these people like that are commenting on here i don't recognize their name from commenting on videos some of them i i do uh and so but you, you never know who's watching the video a lot of people watch the videos that don't comment and that's fine and the ones who do that's great um so anyway i, I think mixing up the time sometimes gives a, a little bit different audience 
to your videos. All right, Paul Double Drag is excited for your nine point something million views, and he says Jason's the best. All right, that's debatable. We'll see. Um, you should do a giveaway on lawn care items like the Pro Plugger or bags of seeds. Yeah, I I wouldn't mind doing more giveaways. I don't. One thing I don't understand is like YouTube has all these rules and stuff. You're supposed to post all this stuff about YouTube is no in no way affiliated with the giveaway and all that. So it's easier to do like on an email or something. Uh, I did a giveaway. I did a live stream a few weeks ago when I hit a hundred thousand subscribers and I, I gave away three pair of Cujo shoes. So Cujo has the new slip on shoes, the Jags. I got a pair. I really like them. And I gave three people that's been real supportive of my channel. I gave three pair away. Uh, well, I actually just told them whatever they want. And so two of them got the Jags and one of them got the lace up kind. So, uh, so anyway, I, I like the idea of doing a giveaway. I just don't want to go through all the legal jumbo, mumbo, jumbo stuff. Andrew, I'm in South Carolina too. All right. Got a little breaking action here. And let me think. Um, as far as me, like I've got, um, I'm running my weed control and fertilization business. I, and the way I've got it set up now, I've got like 300 something yards I downsized. And I'm kind of glad I did because I'm trying to do a lot of the YouTube videos and that takes a good bit of time. But also I was telling somebody today, like I like doing, <coughs> I like working on yards for several weeks and then I have a little bit of a break. And I can do YouTube and then I work on yards and I have a little bit of break and I work on yards and have a break. And I can kind of mix it up and keep a little variety, uh, which is, Great. Jesse says, I hear you. I'll comment more often. Uh, that's fine, Jesse. Uh, if you know what I said, what helps the channel is that people uh, have some. <laughs> well, I don't deal too good with the negative comments, and I'm not saying you leave negative comments. I said, what helps is if somebody leaves a negative comment, somebody leaves a like on the removing the guard on the trimmer. I can't tell you how many people tell me how dumb I am, and how many people it's like people are so passionate about that. It's really crazy. Um, so, anyway. I'm not saying be divisive, but those are the sometimes the videos that do best. Uh, my Bermuda is too tall. If I cut one third tomorrow and that's not quite enough, how long do I have to wait before I cut it again? Uh, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I would say three or four days maybe, you know, because that that you, you can do a couple things. I mean, you just whack it down low. You, you're probably going to stress it out pretty bad. So I, I think you got the right idea by taking it a layer at a time. Um, yeah, I, I'd probably cut it, get, see how bad you stress it out when you cut it. Okay. So if you cut a third of it off, is it, is it still green or is it brown? <laughs> if it's brown, give it a little time. Um, if it's still green, then, you know, I'd say give it three or four days and then take it a little lower if you want to. What do you think is the best weed eater brand? I personally like, um, Husqvarna. I, I uh, have used, you know, Steel Echo, whatever. I, I don't know. I used to have an old school Shindow I like. Um, the Husqvarna, and I, I, don't, I haven't tried all the new ones and everything, so I, I'm just not something I can say definitively, but the Husqvarna, they're, they're typically lightweight, which I like. They perform pretty well upside down. Sometimes they're a little cold nature to start, like when you crank it, you gotta let it warm up a little bit. Um, but the ones I got, I got two, I got a Husqvarna 525 LS and it's, it's pretty powerful. I mean, I'm not saying the most powerful out there, but I mean, it's got good power. I've got this larger speed feed head on it and it works. It'll, it's plenty of power to spin that larger speed feed head. And then I've got the other ones like a 322 or something. It's a little bit lighter. I've got the smaller speed feed head and they're both great. But yeah, I, I like the lighter trimmers because, it's not like I can't pick up 12 pounds. I can pick up 12 pounds, but I would rather pick up nine pounds or eight. I used to have the Husqvarna 326 LS. That was probably my favorite one ever. It literally weighed nine pounds and it was so light, had decent power. I just liked it. So uh, are you expecting to complete your Bermuda grow in this season? Well, I need to probably do a video updating and showing you what it looks like. Uh, I don't, I don't know about completing it, but it's, it's really, really, really close. So if just to quickly recap, we bought a house about three and a half years ago, it was on five and a half acres, but only maybe less than an acre was not woods. We had it pretty much wiped clean. It wasn't like a bunch of trees you want to keep. It was this nastiness and a little brush and briars and just horrible stuff. So we had it basically wiped clean. I plugged it with sod, just 
literally rode around in the back of a trailer in my backyard and just threw pallets of sod out. I mean, um, like a pallet per acre, basically. Uh, and it did it in the summer. And it was real drought stress and some of it survived. But it, anyway, I've been trying to get a fill in. Well, it, it's fine. The back, the back back, which is um, kind of our soccer field driving range area, it's mostly filled in. It looks really, really good. Um, my front yard looks good. Side yard looks good. But immediately behind my house, we renovated last year. So they there was a gravel driveway, and they came in and cleared the gravel driveway out, but there's still rocks. I brought topsoil in, sand in. We put two pallets of sod out this spring. And so we're, I'm trying desperately to get that to fill in before winter because I don't want to have to overseed with ryegrass. I don't know if it's going to make it or not, but it, it's looking way better than it used to. I'll say that. Negative comments hurt, but just remember they're keyboard warriors. I love your Southern accent. I have to. Yeah, those, yeah, you're right. And the people that leave the negative comments, I mean, it's it's kind of like consider your source, you know. <laughs> so, um but I, I don't take it too bad. And fortunately on YouTube, and I try to do this too often, but if they say something too ugly, we can ban them from the channel because, you know, they just make some personal attack. I'm like, listen, I, I ain't got time to be dealing with all that. But uh, let's see, ground effects, he likes steel. I'd be interested in ground effects, which uh, particular model you've used. I know a lot of people use like the, the 91 or the, the 94. Some other day was talking about the 111, which I know is a pretty powerful one. Which uh, steel trimmer do you like? Uh, let's see. Hopefully one day I'll have a great big lawn to use everything I learned watching your videos. I like his, is that, I can't tell if that's like a ninja outfit he's got on or what he's got on. Uh, well, yeah, I've got a big lawn and a lot of the videos I do, I'm, I'm kind of experimenting on my own yard. So uh, I like having a big yard. Uh, we got chickens and stuff like that. So I, I, I like that. I enjoy your channel and videos of an Eastern North Carolina of 6,000 square foot of zoysia plugs planted in April. They appear healthy. Uh, I, I tell you, he's wanting them to spread faster. Zoysia is slow to spread. I don't I don't know what to do other than just fertilize it, maybe some loose soil, you know, if you want to top dress it or something. It's just, it's just a slow process. Um, I'm curious, what kind of zoysia did you go with, Mark, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Double Dragon says, you ain't dumb, Jason. You know the haters are going to hate. You're doing great, brother. The kids, the ones calling you names wouldn't have the guts to make videos and probably our kids. Yeah, it's, you know, I forget somebody. Uh, anyway, it's, it's mostly comical, the, the comments you get. But so overwhelming amount of them are positive, so I really appreciate that. James said he has a steel FS 56 RC. I think that's a kind of a homeowner version, but that, nothing wrong with that by any means. Whenever people talk about you, you're doing something right. Yeah. And he says, yep. And true. That's probably right. I guess so. So at least they're watching videos. You know, that's great for me. Uh, I've been guard free for years. My old Husky Manor 322 has been good. Yeah, I think that's the one I got. I think I've got a 322 and, and I like it. I've been using it. My 525 LS was, um, not performing well so i've been using the 322 almost all year but i've got the 525 fixed now and i've got some overgrown areas in my house i've got like a creek area that gets pretty tall and a bank it's really tall grass so i'll probably use that 525 ls um, my 12 year old son has an echo srm 225 and i've used it a time or two uh, let's see. Made in America. What advice can you give a person torn between starting a small business or pursuing a turf grass degree? Huh? Well, I know a friend of mine who's got a horticulture degree, I believe. I think he's actually a PhD in that. Um, and he teaches, teaches that at a university. You know, it depends on to me, like, like if I was going to give a, somebody who's wanting to know whether they should go to college or not so i'm not sure if you're 18 years old or so or older or whatever but um the i went to college but and, and that was great i certainly don't regret that but i don't really use the degree that i study i, I like turf grass <laughs> i was um so my question would be if you got a turf grass degree what would you want to do with that would you want to go start a turf grass business um i might just go straight for the business if that was the case but if you want to you move into some kind of educational research field with turf grass, then uh, or more, something more scientific, and then uh, maybe go that route. So I, I think you got to me. The question I would want to know is, 
do I have an entrepreneur spirit and do I enjoy the the day to day grind of running a small business? Because that can be some challenges. Uh, I personally like that and think it's very rewarding. And I, the idea of that sounds better to me now than going and taking classes. Again, I, I have a college degree. I've, I've done that and did fine in college. But I um, and I, and I don't know your financial situation, your age, all that would also play into it. But um, anyway, I, I don't think you have to have a, a degree to start a turf grass business, but it certainly would be some helpful knowledge. But you also need to have know, do I have a business sense or not? Because that's going to probably have a lot to do with your, how successful you are. I have to weed eat and mow one acre of land. That's a pretty good bit. Uh, I, I have probably have three acres that I'm actually mowing at my house. Takes me about, if I just cut it, it's like hour and a half maybe with 60 inch zero turn. But if I get out there and do all the weed eating and all that, I mean, I, I don't do that every time. Too too much time. Our uh, ground effects has the FS 111R and the RX. Um, <clears throat> he said, and those are, those are pretty big, big ones that are powerful. Mark said, I was asking what kind of zoysia he got. He got the compadre zoysia. I have some jamur as well. I guess they say that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not familiar with those. We deal, you know, mostly have like Z52 or Meyer zoysia and then a uh, emerald zoysia. I've got some Zorro zoysia at my house, which looks very similar to the emerald zoysia. So I'm not familiar with the compadre. I have heard of it, um, but I'm not familiar. I wouldn't know if it was sitting here in front of me. Shelly says, hey, great work. I'm new, but what would be the best service to start this season? I'm thinking about cleanups and mulch to build a lead list for fall and winter, or should I mow? A lot of people that are mowing, you know, some of them are just doing that for a steady income, but then they, they've they got, they're trying to ultimately get other jobs. So if I'm going to mow, but I really want to do landscaping installs. So I, I just got kind of a mowing crew and that gives me some steady money and also gives me some leads to do the landscaping. Yeah, I, I think that's a good um, plan, you know, so, it, you know, I, I don't know how, what kind of demand there is in your area. If you think you can get enough, business doing mulch and cleanups because those might be more profitable for, for you than the mowing. But again, the mowing might keep you some steady income coming. So, you know, people go full fledged landscaping business and that's fine. There's higher ticket um, items, but can you keep it the business rolling in all the time? And so I think that's where the, the balance of mowing some comes in. So again, you can't really give like a definite answer. You should do this or you shouldn't do that. But I just try and give you a little bit of the pros and cons. Thanks for all the great content. I work alongside my 18 year old son. He's lawn business. Cheers from California. Well, that's great. Uh, my son is 10. Uh, so we're a little ways away from that, but that would be awesome if I one day got to work with him. We've been, one thing we've been doing lately, we've been building cornhole sets together, I'm trying to give him a little entrepreneurial spirit. I'm like, Hey, Let's build some cornhole sets, you know, spare time, something we can do together, and then we'll sell them on Facebook Marketplace. We'll split the money. But just trying to teach him, you know, how to think, like, you don't just have to go work at a grocery store to make money. Or whatever. Like, you, you can think on your own. And, you know, whether he's going to be some big business owner one day, or I have no idea. But I want to give him some exposure to that. Cheers from California. Good to hear from you out in California. I just weed eat today, James said. He's got an acre, and I bet that's a pretty big job. Hope you get out there early in the morning, late in the afternoon. Dylan says, what are your thoughts on builder grade, poor topsoil, and rough grading in new construction? Would a home buyer be able to have a say in the soil and sod to start things off right? You know, that's a great question. Some of these neighborhoods that we go to, I mean, I – in my town, they're building a lot of houses, these little spec homes in there. I mean, some of them you see when they're building, the dirt is terrible and, and they just throw the sod. And of course, Bermuda grass will grow on it, but it's not ideal by any means. And so, I, I mean, I really feel like the top, adding some better dirt and I don't think there's any builder grade top. So I think they just take what's there and it's, it's just terrible. But anyway, yeah, if they could put just a little bit of topsoil down first for the saw, I think it would make a huge difference. Now, you might could aerate it and, and kind of top dress it at the same time and get some better soil in there if it's too, you know, if it's already had the sod laid, maybe that'll help. But 
I feel your pain on that one, Dylan. They they do the minimal they can do to get that house sold sometimes. Shelly says, thanks so much. And that looks like our last comment. We've got about four more minutes. If you got a question, post it now because I'm about to sign off here. We've had a little bit of sickness in my household. I've, I'm one of the ones that's avoided it so far, but um, I am in the minority on that, Guru. So if I am sick tomorrow, you will – would not be shocking. All right. Got a couple more here. Uh, hey, I watch your content all the time. It kills me every time you get fired up by the customer. You know what, Dan? I, people, uh, I had some people tell me, quit doing that. Quit complaining about your complaining customer. So I've kind of backed off on those. Some, I said, well, some people like it. Some people don't. I try not to do it too bad. But sometimes customers get to me. And I feel like if I share about my experience, somebody else will, can relate because they've had a similar experience. Uh, any suggestions keeping a zoysial on healthy? other than keeping the right height, pH, micros, etc. cetera. Um, you know, again, I refer to my friend James a lot. He was talking about somebody recently, and I forget where he saw this. Now the questions are flying in. I'll have to blow through these. Uh, somebody came in there, and they I, I forget what the, even the word is. Like, uh, I don't think it was dethatching, but they basically came in and, and did a lot of – had some kind of machine that comes in and rakes it all up and kind of loosens it up, and sort of tearing up your grass a little bit. But he said it was amazing how the zoysia lawn responded because it was struggling and it just really bounced away. So I, I do think with the zoysia lawns, the thatch becomes an issue. Uh, and I don't dethatch and do all that. But I, I'll say this, my zoysia lawn, I, I've got Bermuda. I've got several acres, but I've got a, a little bit of zoysia, Zorro and emerald zoysia well my zorro zoysia looks like emerald in the last two springs has been near perfect i mean looking great i got like two pallets not that much but it's underneath some crepe myrtles but last year and this year uh it went from great to not so great and i don't i can't figure out why why i did i i mean i really don't know now this year uh there's part of it still looks great and part is not great and i'm thinking I don't know if it's something I'm sprayed on it, and I didn't really spray that much on it. Something is just messing with it. So, so uh, it's almost, sometimes I think on the zoysia, almost less is is more as far as herbicides, and I would just go easy on blasting a bunch of herbicides on it if it's nice and beautiful. Just anything, just spot treat it lightly, um, you know, because I, I think some of the herbicides are, are taking the green color out of mine. All right, you guys bombard me with questions right at the very end. We'll, we'll blow through them here. Uh, can you explain man hour versus budget hour or an equation for cleanups? Oh, man, I'm probably not the right one for that. <laughs> I'm working um, solo. Um, I'm sorry, Shelly. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to help you on that. I mean, man hours, you know, I, I, I mean, to me, you know, I, I would think you just look at it. You got to have some experience being able to figure out it's not your exact question. Maybe somebody can um, help us on this one. But if, if I'm looking at a job, I mean, I'm, I've got to have a little bit of experience to estimate this job is going to take me four hours, um, you know, four man hours or six man hours or whatever. And we're going to charge, you know, eighty five dollars per man hour, whatever it is. And, and that's the price. And, and that's and you just get out there and knock it out. So I'm not sure. uh I don't know that I'm familiar with budget hour. I probably should know that, but I, I apologize. Maybe somebody can educate us real quick on Shelly's question. I love your content. Can you post a video about the Steel S56RC? I think my dad may have that. If, and he, and if he does, he may have that, or he may have like the 56 um, edger, you know, like the homeowner kind of edger. But I don't have that trimmer. So I, I, if I have one, maybe I can do a video. In my area, the New Harms, they aren't even sodden, just throwing down bahia grass seed. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, bahia grass. I said, I don't understand how people call that a lawn. I mean, that stuff is terrible, in my opinion. Compadre is similar to zenith, it can be seeded. Okay, compadre is a medium width blade. Yeah, I've, I've seen um, some of the seeds you can buy. Um, I would think you would need really good germination to get the get your zoysia looking good if it kind of came up thin from your seeding, it might take forever to fill in. Would you push some low rates of liquid nitrogen at 0.2 pounds per thousand every other week and water it in to help spread the plugs? Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea, um, whether it was liquid or granular or whatever. Um, 
you know, I'm trying to get my grass to fill in. I've got Bermuda, but I'm fertilizing like crazy. Now I've heard on zoysia, this probably established zoysia line, that more than two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet is does not really yield any additional benefits as far as it being green. So I don't think you can just push zoysia like you can Bermuda. And, and no matter what you do, the fertilizer, it's, it's not going to spread like Bermuda. But I, I like that strategy as far as helping it speed it up. Confused, solitaire's quinclorite content per thousand is about the rate uh, quinclorac by itself. How can solitaire be safe for centipede, but quinclorac is not? Um, well, uh, solitaire, I'll say this. I've used solitaire, I believe, on a centipede lawn and it basically burn a hole slammed through it. So if it's on the label, that's great. But I'm telling you, um, it, it is a, you can burn a centipede lawn up for sure with some solitaire. So you got to spray it lightly, but solitaire will straight knock out some crabgrass in a hurry. So hope that helps. Um, Shelly says, oh, no, tell the fam, get well soon. I think we are on the recovery from what I, we're just trying to keep the two of us who hadn't got sick yet from getting sick so we don't have to uh, keep it going any longer. Feel you, man. My wife and daughter have been sick. I'm a nose diving now also. Yeah, I'm still feeling good. I'm trying to keep my distance, <laughs> but sleeping on the couch. But that's all right. Uh, is there a software you recommend to help price out jobs? I mean, I use Yardbook, um, but I, I'm not using it to price out jobs. Now, it does have a feature where I can go trace out the yard, like a lot measurement tool. So I trace out a lot of the yards when I'm quoting square footage for bidding. Um, I'm bidding uh, weed control and fertilization. I don't know how many square feet the yard is. I can trace it out, spits out square footage. Now, I want to go look at it and give them a price in person. I want to look at it, look at the yard. But I also want to talk to the person face to face to try to sell the job. But that's what I use. I don't. I'm sure there's other softwares that do other things depending on what kind of job. Um, sorry, Shelly. We're hoping we're hoping somebody will uh, help you out on that question. Uh, Dallas grass is kicking my rump this year. Does it spread worse through reseeding or rhizome spread? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't. I didn't see it spread too terrible. I mean, obviously it does spread. I did hear somebody the other day, and this is something I'm going to try. Somebody uh, commented that using tribute total at a high rate, which is about $300 a bottle in case you want some sticker shock if you're gonna, gonna go buy it. Uh, $300 a bottle for Dallas grass and the, uh, and what is it? What's the other one? Um, Sulfetrazone, which is um, dismiss. So high rate of dismiss, high rate of tribute total. And they said it will kill Dallas grass. Now, this is somebody commented in a Facebook group. I want to try it myself. Said it would kill Virginia. Um, I'm sorry, broom sedge. Two really tough weeds. Now, say probably going to get a little turf burn by doing that, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to try it and I want to see if it works for myself. So, the other one, you know, Dallas grass is very difficult to kill. Uh, let's see. You're smart. Give yourself some credit. Well, I think everybody has knows something about some things. And so I, I'm kind of content with who I am for the most part. Your last video about what customers hate, I was the first viewer. What was that last viewer, last video about what customers hate? Oh, I did like um, 12 things that are mistakes with lawnmower. I think that's what I showed, like blowing grass all out in the street and all this other stuff uh best way to get your first few clients i would just tell everybody you know all your friends don't be embarrassed that you're starting a lawn business some people think you're crazy just just be proud of it hey i'm starting a lawn business put it on facebook let your friends family know um and then you start hopefully getting to know other people and lawn care people in your area because some of them don't even want the business that's coming in they might send you customers Get, if you're a mowing person, get to know the weed control people because I'm a weed control person. I send mowing customers to all kind of people and vice versa. They send me weed control. Um, obviously, get started on social media, get a website. But, you know, I think first few, I would just be proud of your new business. And and, and don't expect them just to feel sorry for you. Oh, he will give we'll give a uh, Hutton a, a chance. He's starting a new business, you know, take, take your business serious, carry yourself professional, get a nice logo, make yourself, you know, show up, do a great job where they're not embarrassed to, to try out. And then they'll start telling others about how great you are. All right, James, appreciate you watching my video. Yep. Uh, yep. My new house is all behavior grass, two grand to resod something decent. Can't afford it. 
Carly. Well, you could plug Bermuda. That's what I did. I couldn't afford sod my three or four acres of grass. I just plugged Bermuda and let it spread. But I, but hay is awful. I mean, that's just awful. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Jacob. Uh, I think you did a steel comparison engine and driveway at your dad house, and he was in it. I'm not sure what steel trimmer he had. Yeah, my dad does have one or two steel trimmers, but I think he might have that steel 56 edger. We got another tip. Dan, appreciate that. Have a blessed night. Everyone learns from your customer lessons. Learn. Keep up the great work. Less is more with Zoysia. Appreciate that, man, uh, and you guys uh, supporting the channel. I said I hit 100,000. It wasn't like the hugest accomplishment ever. I took, you know, took me 11 years. I don't know if that people should congratulate me or feel sorry for me, but uh, it just shows a lot of people support the channel and watch the videos. And that's humbling. I'll tell you, I try to start a second channel doing all these overgrown lines. It's hard to start a second channel. Um, so I just, I said, man, I think I'm just going to stick with this channel and, and keep working with it. Uh, let's see. Do you have any recommendation on scheduling or routing software with mobile apps? And sorry, I tried to retract the duplicate question. Uh, no problem. Uh, yeah, I said I, I use your, but that's pretty much all I've used. So I, I don't have a lot of uh, experience with other softwares, to be honest with you. But uh, I think it does. I'm not sure. I don't use the routing on your book. Um, so you'd have to check check that out the scheduling it definitely it definitely will do a lot of that as far as like setting up recurring jobs and putting a sign on them so anyway you can get a free yard book account um and there's a paid version it comes with some more some more but anybody anybody else want to comment on these you can we are wrapping up here uh hey jason pretty new to your channel but very much love the content thanks thanks mark i've been on there 11 years ago almost a thousand videos some are terrible some are pretty good and, you know some are in between so Tell people, surely something uh, that you will enjoy from the show. Will says, thank you, dude. All right, appreciate y'all watching. We made it through a lot of participation from the audience, which makes it easier for me because if I have to start talking on my own, it gets bad sometimes. Uh, but you guys asked some great questions. Uh, nobody acted like an idiot on here tonight, so that was even better. Oh, here we go, one more. Any recommendations on getting rid of torpedo grass from Zoysia? I don't think there's a, uh, I learned this when I first started doing weed control and fertilization, this guy had, he's like, why wow, I got all this weeds in my backyard. He's flipping out and I go look at him it was torpedo grass and he's, they all upset about it. And, um, so I, I, I sprayed it with quinclorac is, is what is the, it's on the label. I think it says do three apps of quinclorac. So I buy the quinclorac. I got there, spray it wait two weeks or whatever, spray it again, wait two weeks, spray it again. And my buddy had been doing this forever. He already told me it wasn't going to work. Well, it, it basically turns it yellow. I mean, it, it's, I have not heard of anybody that knows how to kill torpedo grass. It is terrible. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I, I've got like 300 something yards. I maybe two have torpedo grass in them. And, and the ones that do, I was like, you're just going to have to live with it. <laughs> I don't know how you get rid of it. I really don't. I'm sure Roundup would kill it, but I mean, it's going to kill everything. All right. Marlon says, thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you for your work. Shelly, I feel like I let you down. I wasn't able to give you great uh, answers, but I appreciate you supporting anyway. James, have you ever broke one of your customer's stuff? Um, yes, I broke glass windows when I was mowing their, mowing their yard, like glass front door edging, just threw a rock and just shattered the glass door. We bought them a new door. That's <laughs> a... So, I got accused of messing up somebody's car and we ended up having to pay to paint the side of somebody's car. I still to this day don't think we did it, but I took one for the team on that one. Is yard work, uh, work on Apple? Is it still, I think it's only Android, but you can just pull up the, sometimes like on my phone, I'll, I'll use the app a lot, but sometimes I'll just log in to yard book. On, on my browser. So I would imagine you could do that on an Apple, but I think the app is on Android as far as I understand. All right. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next video.